Hey, how's it going? Tim Kanak with Perkins Roofing for another informational video for you. Today, we're going to talk about seven ways or the biggest seven ways that I see other roofers trying to cut corners on your roof. The number one way that roofing contractors are going to try to rip you off by cutting corners on your roof is by not doing full roof repairs. I see it all the time. You hire a contractor, they say they're gonna take care of this repair for you, and then all they do is remove a couple tiles, remove a couple shingles, whatever your topping for your roof is, and they throw a little roof cement down. And half the time they don't even sprinkle granules on it, and they don't replace the tiles correctly or the shingles correctly. So that roof cement is a temporary repair. We call that a temporary repair in the roofing industry. A full repair would consist of taking out the paper, the roofing paper off the roof, all the way down to the plywood, and then changing the bad wood. You cut the plywood, like this piece right here, we cut this piece of plywood off, and put it into the spot where you have bad wood. Take the bad wood out and put the new good wood in. Then recover it with new roofing membrane instead of just roof cement, which is this stuff here in this bucket. That's that black nasty stuff that you don't wanna get all over you because it's hard to get off. And after we put new tiles, if the tiles are broken, new shingles, or if it's a metal roof, new panels, or if it's a flat roof, you sprinkle granules in. Otherwise, what's gonna happen, especially in South Florida, is that sun is gonna bake out that roofing, roofing cement because it's black and it's gonna crack out in about a year. So you wanna make sure you're using the right products on the roof and doing a full roof repair, not doing the bare minimum to make a couple bucks and then disappear when the homeowner calls and says, hey, this repair only lasted a couple months, where are you? And can't get a hold of you. Happens all the time. Do not cheap out on your roof. Your roof protects everything within your home. The roof is the main place where you wanna spend money to protect all your other nice, pretty stuff inside of your house. Ways you can avoid getting ripped off on these repairs or people cutting corners on your repairs is ask for specifications in your quote. If you have guys writing what they're gonna do on a piece of paper and giving it to you, that's clue number one that this contractor is probably not gonna do things the correct way. Get everything in writing and then get photos of everything and match the photos to the specs to make sure you are getting what you paid for. That is the best thing you can do to protect yourself. The next thing you can do is ask for a warranty. I provide one year warranties with most of my roof repairs. Ask for a warranty from the contractor. If they are not willing to provide you a warranty for their work, then is that work gonna be good? Probably not. Ask for a warranty with the work. And with that warranty, check the company on Sundays. Make sure that they're a real legitimate company and that they actually have insurance and a license. If you haven't watched it, watch my video on insurance. You don't wanna put yourself in a position where people who are uninsured are on your roof, they fall off. They can sue you as the homeowner even though they fell off of the roof. They can sue you, it's your property. So be careful who you let on your property and make sure that they are properly insured for what they're doing. The number two place that contractors are gonna to try to rip you off, number two, is with roof coatings. Look, I got some Nice coating product down here, polyflash. So roof coatings, there's a difference between coating and liquid roofing system. I have some videos on this. If you want to learn more, I would check those out for details, but I will just explain here the difference. A coating is when you just paint some stuff onto the roof. That's not the proper way to fix that roof. You wanna do a liquid system which is fabric reinforced. I'm gonna give you an example here. This is a detail fabric. They make larger rolls than this too. But this membrane here, when it's coated into the system, will reinforce the system. If you do not put this membrane down with your liquid product, it is not a fully reinforced system. The other thing with a system is you need a proper primer. There are different primers for different substrates that you're coating to. If you're coating concrete, you need one primer. If you're coating an old roof, you need one primer. If you're coating wood or metal, you need different primers for that. So you need certain primers to make sure that the system is going to properly adhere 
to what you're coding to. Otherwise, all you're doing is putting a Band-Aid on top of a Band-Aid. You don't want to be doing that. You want a system that is going to be sticking to the existing substrate and cannot come up and it is reinforced, especially in the weak points of the system. So that's the difference between a liquid system, liquid roofing system, and a coating. A lot of people, including a lot of roofers, don't know that difference. So make sure that you are getting apples to apples if you are trying to get a restoration of your roof and make sure you are getting a fully reinforced liquid roofing system rather than a coating. Those come with NOAs for permits or Florida building code approvals for permits. If you can pull a permit for it, it's a system. If you can't, it's not a system, it's a coating. On that note, a lot of people will use stuff like my amazing, beautiful Poly Flash 1C here as a cure-all or the roofing cement, which we talked about in part one of this video. There is no such thing as a cure-all in roofing. All of these different amazing roofing products have different uses. For instance, this poly flash right here will not stick to single ply TPO very well. I love this stuff, but it won't. And there are products that would stick to metal better than this poly flash. So there are certain products for certain situations. And if you don't know that, and you're the roofer just putting blah, blah, blah all over everything, you are part of the problem because there's no such thing as a cure-all. Every product that's out there ha is a best use product in some sort of scenario. A few more main points for liquid systems. Some things that need to be done before putting a liquid system on or should be done. Number one, you need to know if you have slope. The slope of the existing roof will determine what product can be put on. Also, whatever the, sub the substrate is, what are you putting the coating on? You're putting it on a flat roof or are you putting it on a metal roof? Do not coat tile and shingle roofs. I have a video about this. Watch it. Unless you want mold in your plywood and you want to create a greenhouse effect. Watch that video. Number two, you need to do an adhesion test. You need to make sure that the primer is going to stick to whatever you're putting. There should be an adhesion test done on every roof before you start coating the whole thing. Because I have seen coatings where you can just peel the entire thing up very, very easily. Number three, a moisture survey. Certain decks like concrete decks require a moisture survey prior to coating it. If you don't do the moisture survey, then you don't know what kind of moisture is already in that system. So if there's insulation in the deck, if it's a concrete deck, you wanna do a moisture survey to find out how much moisture is in there. You don't wanna be coating a sponge. So you don't wanna be putting a liquid system on a sponge. So make sure you do these things before you coat the roof. Corner cutting number three, and I'm using the German three. Some of you will know what that is if you've watched a certain movie. So <laughs> if uh, you are doing a re-roof, the main way people will try to cut corners that I see is skipping over structural repairs. If there's bad wood on the deck or there are cracks in the concrete or it's a metal deck and the corrugated panels are rusted out or cracked, they should be swapped out. A lot of the time that is failed to, to be done. I see it all the time where someone gets a roof, it's only two years old, I go in the attic, there's bad trusses, there's bad wood. The decking wood should always be replaced if it's bad. Someone needs to test that wood. Someone needs to test that concrete. If it's cracked, it, it needs an injection in it to remove the crack. It should be resealed. If it is a metal deck and the panels are rusted out, they should be removed and replaced, or they should be wire brushed and fixed. You can do that with metal panels. Trusses too. Trusses that are bowing, especially here in Florida, a lot of people don't know it, but the number one cause of roof leaks in Florida, not hurricanes, it is termites. So trusses, if they're termited out, need to be reinforced with sister trusses before that roof goes back. This is the number one way that contractors will cut corners. They'll skip over some of this stuff. Most contractors have a wood clause in their wood bill. Check that out too, make sure that one contractor is not way higher than another contractor. If they are, ask them to match. Most of the time, contractors can match prices unless someone is not insured. So um, ask for that, for price match on wood bills. But uh, usually most valid contractors will say, will include X amount of sheets of plywood, and then anything over that amount will be X amount of dollars, and any structural work will be X amount of dollars per foot. So I would check for that in the contract. Look at that wood clause. Make sure they're apples to apples but 
the, a lot of contractors will skip over that wood because maybe they don't make money on it. A lot of contractors will overbill you for wood because maybe they underbid the job and they're trying to make up for that by charging a lot of money on the wood. So these are things to watch out for as a homeowner, the wood. What you can do to protect yourself about the wood is ask to see all the bad wood before it's replaced. Whether that be you wanna go on the roof and check yourself or whether you want photos of all the bad wood. What we will do for clients is we will number the pieces of plywood that we change out, number one, number two, number three, so you know and you see the number with a big magic marker on it, which piece of wood that is, so you know that people aren't lying about how much wood they change, because that does happen. So ask for that, ask for photos, ask for proof, go on the roof, check it out. Number four is wall flashings. A lot of the time when you have a wall on a roof, you will have an L metal, that comes along the roof X amount of inches and then up the roof X amount of inches. For instance, Florida building code requires four by five. High velocity hurricane zone requires five by seven. But on a lot of roofs, especially like newer tile roofs from the 90s, you'll see that the stucco comes all the way back down over the L metal. So most people don't want to touch that in that scenario. They'll just leave the metal there. You need to make sure that your roofer is checking the condition of the metal. If that metal is rusted out, then it needs to be replaced. Otherwise, whatever leaks you were having in that wall transition, which is one of the worst spots for leaks, it happens all the time, it will continue if they don't change that out. Now it can get expensive. Most of the time, and even in our contracts, we have on there a time and material price to cut the stucco, change out the metal, and then re-stucco because every type of area of stucco, depending on access, depending on how much stucco needs to be done, depending on the coats, depending on the condition of the waterproofing behind the stucco, it can cause different prices to do. So in this area here, if we have to cut the stucco eight inches up, which that's Florida building code, you're gonna cut your line eight inches above the roof level and then remove the L metal, put a new metal L metal in, scrub coat of stucco, Maybe we have to change waterproofing before we put scrub coat of stucco and then finish coat of stucco. And then even after that, you still got to paint the new stucco. Otherwise it's going to crack if it doesn't have a protective layer of painting on it. And usually you need two coats of paint. So these are all the things that have to happen in that area to really make sure you get a good seal. And it can get expensive. Roofers don't want to do it. They don't want to hear customers complaining about this and that change order. So a lot of times they'll just skip it but it's really important to check the condition of that metal. Otherwise that new roof you're getting ain't so new in that area. So how can you protect yourself when it comes to the flashing metal? Number one, know your roof. Know if you have those types of transitions. Number two, know your proximity to water. Because if you have galvanized metal on a house and you're within 2000 feet of the water, you need aluminum, you need copper, you need stainless steel. Galvanized metal is not going to cut it. And number three, just hire a good contractor. Hire someone who you trust. Hire someone who has good reviews, who you know is going to pay attention to those types of details. Ask for referrals. That's how you know you're gonna get a good job and your job is gonna be done correctly from the beginning. Way number five, that contractors are gonna cut corners on you. Flashing details. That means vents, whether they're Fence, gooseneck vents or lead stack vents for plumbing or other details that are included in penetrations, skylights, solar panels, the list goes on and on, on and on. Anything that penetrates into the roof is a penetration and needs a flashing detail. Now on those flashing details, what you need to do is you need to take your underlayments and you have to target those areas. So those areas should get a double reinforcement of material and it should seal up the penetration, the eight inches I talked about, to make sure that they don't leak anymore. There are a number of different ways you can flash it. The worst way to do it is just to flash it with roof cement. But you can do liquid flashing, like with poly flash and the fabric that I talked about. And you can also, like I said, do target flashings with double underlayments. And there are also things like portable sealers and chem curbs that you can get into with certain flashings. So know the flashing details that you're gonna get on the roof. Ask the roofer, what kind of flashing details are you gonna use? Ask about the valleys. 
When you have a valley on a roof, how are they gonna finish that valley? Look right here. I've got a valley right above me right now. In this valley, there's a piece of valley metal that runs down the valley. And you can ask, how is it gonna be finished? Is it gonna be woven shingles? That's a woven shingle. You can also ask for, how's it gonna terminate? How are you gonna do the tiles? Is it gonna be an open valley, a closed valley? There are different ways to do valley flashings. So ask, how is that valley flashing gonna be done? If you have an open valley, you need to run a cap sheet down it to protect it, a granulated cap sheet. So there are different details that need to be done certain ways. And a lot of people mess this stuff up or they just do it whatever the cheapest and fastest way is. So make sure that your details are gonna get done the way that you want in your contract. I would ask the contractor how they're gonna do this penetration, how they're gonna do your valleys. It's always good to ask these things. The number six way, and this is probably the most common that roofers cut corners, is by just moving too fast. A lot of the times the roofers are getting paid per square foot. So they're trying to go as fast as they can. They want to get this house done and move to the next one, and move to the next one, and move to the next one. That means more money and more money and more money. So these roofers, they move too fast and they're not doing their laps correctly. So these materials, when they overlap, they're supposed to overlap a certain amount of inches. It'll tell on the permit how many inches each layer is supposed to overlap the next layer. They're supposed to be staggered. They're supposed to be lined up nice and neat. They're supposed to sit. These materials, before they just go straight down, are supposed to sit in the sun and relax before you put them down. And even then, the polyglass materials, the asphaltic materials need to be applied with heat and pressure. You cannot just take the film off and stick it down. I've talked about this on other videos. Right now, this is not very sticky. This has been sitting in my garage. It's not sitting in the sun. It's a little sticky, but not that sticky. That's not gonna stick if I put it down on a roof like that. I need to apply heat and pressure. I need to overlap and overlap. And cap sheets, you don't want to overlap a cap sheet to a cap sheet. You have to do that correctly. I've seen that mistake done a lot of times. When you put a cap sheet on top of a cap sheet, you need to heat that up. You need to put roof cement down, prime it, and heat it. Otherwise, that's not sticking. So when you're targeting cap sheet to cap sheet, or when you have T-joints cap sheet to cap sheet, these need to be done correctly. These are the type of details that people mess up. These are where roofs fail in these areas. The roofer's moving too fast. They're trying to get the job done to move to the next job. That's what they're doing. Make sure that your roofer is taking the time that they need. That's why it's so important to hire a quality roofer. So important to hire someone that's been around for a long time. It's so important to hi hire someone that has good referrals, good references. I have seen way too many roofs where they mess up the overlaps, where they do not apply heat and pressure. And even though it's a new roof, I can put my hand in the joints and pick the whole roof up with my hands. Happens all the time because they didn't apply heat and pressure. They didn't use a heat welder. They didn't do the seams correctly. They put cap sheet on top of cap sheet. That happens all the time. So make sure that your roofer has a project manager or the inspector goes up there with a prod and prods and tests the seams before the roof is finished. Feel free to do it yourself. Go up on the roof with the roofer and say, hey, I want to test this roof and make sure this is good before I pay you that final payment. And have them prod the roof. Or you go up there and prod the roof. Ask for evidence that this roof is good because that is a big failure point is just incorrect install. They're going too fast. They didn't use the heat weller. They didn't use the roller. The seams are lifting up. That's a problem. Or they didn't back nail on a sloped roof. You've got to make sure these things are done. You're the homeowner, it's your home. Ask for evidence. The other thing you can do is make sure that the installers on your home are certified in the material that they're installing. Most manufacturers have classes where they will certify your installers saying, yes, this person has gone through the class. They know how to install this product. Make sure your installers are certified in the product that is going on your roof. Very easy to ask for that. Corner cutting item number seven is simply just using cheap products. Instead of using thicker papers, using thin papers, using thin materials, or not as good of products. Like asphaltic is better than, in my opinion, asphalt, asphaltic is better than synthetic. So using asphaltic items, using heavier papers, the heavier the paper, the better instead of thinner papers. We use 80 mil 
underlayments, not 60 mil underlayments. You see right here, TU plus. That's an 80 mil tile underlayment. Most roofers are gonna quote you using 60 mil underlayments. The heavier the paper underneath, the longer that roof is gonna last. And it's not that big of a price difference between the 80 mil and the 60 mil. But that can be the difference in how your roof lasting 15 years and your roof lasting 20 or 25 years. So make sure that quality products are being installed on your roof. And that when you receive quotes, because you should be getting three quotes for your roof, minimum. Make sure when you receive quotes that the products are apples to apples. If one roofer is using cheaper products and one roofer is using expensive products, what price do you think is gonna be cheaper and what price do you think is gonna be more expensive? Usually, I would not pick the cheapest roofer. If you get three quotes, maybe pick the middle guy if you're concerned about price. Because the cheaper guy, they're gonna be the guy cutting corners. These seven cutting corners I'm talking to you about, that's gonna be whoever the cheapest guy is most of the time. So, the products matter. Make sure you're getting apples to apples. The tiles matter. Make sure that you're getting, if you want clay tile, make sure you're not getting the, uh, a bad one. Concrete tiles. This concrete tile, I got that, broke it. That barely, I barely touched it and it broke. I won't have any of the clay tiles. So get the products that you're paying for. The other thing too is I see a lot of metal roofs where they use galvanized panels too close to the salt water. You wanna use aluminum for your panels, for your detail metals, for your drip metals, your gooseneck metals. All, if you have metal on your roof, and guess what? Every roof has metal. All your terminations are metal. If you are within 2,000 feet of the water, you want aluminum, stainless steel, copper. Do not put galvanized metals. They will go. Your roof will not last as long as it should because of the salt water. We're in Florida. We're in South Florida. There's a lot of salt water. That includes not just the ocean, but the intercoastal. Canals off the intercoastal. Any tributary that directly leads to salt water may have brackish water. So you have to be careful for any of those tributaries or canals. It's very important. Make sure to use the proper metals and make sure that your contractor is quoting you the proper metals. It's a lot cheaper if one contractor is quoting an aluminum re-roof and one is, included, is quoting a steel re-roof. The steel re-roof is gonna be significantly cheaper. And if you go with them and those panels rust out, you're gonna be out of luck. There's nothing you could do in that scenario because you're getting what you quoted for. You can't go after the contractor for that. They gave, that, that, that is your, your responsibility as the homeowner at the end of the day to make sure you're getting the proper product to put on. The contractor will not be responsible for that at the end of the day. I assure you that that will happen. So that's gonna wrap up this little video here. Uh, I know a lot of me talking and telling you stuff. Hopefully I have enough videos to put over my face so you're not just looking at me the whole time when I edit this bad boy. But thanks again for watching another video from Perkins Roofing and from me. Uh, please, if you are, live in South Florida, if you are in Florida even and you have questions, I help people on the West Coast. I help people in Jacksonville. It doesn't matter where you live. I'm helping people in Africa with roofing questions. So it doesn't matter where you live. I'm open to helping. It's not all about the money for me. I'm an educator. I want to educate you on roofing. That is my goal. But if you do happen to live in South Florida and want the best roofing service and products that you can get, give us a call for Miami-Dade, Broward, Monroe counties. It's 305 MIA roof. And then for Palm Beach County, St. Lucie County, Martin County, call 561-559-ROOF. Other questions, you can email us at support at, uh, support at Perkins Roofing. Dot net. Please give us an email if you have questions. We're happy to help. We will travel. So if you want to pay for our travel expenses, hotel, gas, etc., somewhere else in Florida, we will travel to do your job. It just may cost a little more money. But if you want a good job, you know who to call. So check us out. Thanks again. Perkins Roofing. See you next time.